everyone and welcome. My name is Kelly and I live in Northern Maryland with my husband and my dog, Sylvie. And I have two rise hydroponic gardens that you can see behind me and a patio that I plant mostly with native plants and containers. So today in this video, I'm actually gonna go over four different types of snap peas that I've actually been trying in the rise gardens behind me. And I wanted to kind of share some of the things I've learned from growing these different varieties and hopefully you can kind of learn something from them too, especially if you're growing hydroponically, this might apply to you, but it's just a variety of different snap peas I've tried. So let me introduce the four that I'm gonna be talking about today. The first one is, well, the rise snap peas. So if you guys can see it, uh, these are the patio peas. And you can buy these on Rise's website. I've also found them from different seed sellers. When you buy seed pods from Rise, which I do kind of plan to talk about a little bit more in the future, you will, you get four in a container. Um, and they kind of come in these like pre-made little pods with the growing medium on the bottom. And then they have a foil top with the pea, like it says the pea on the top or whatever plant you're growing. And then the foil here, which you would punch out uh, so that the, the light can get in. And then it says how long it takes for the seed to germinate, although that's very um, kind of a rough estimate. So that's one I'm going to talk about today. Let's put it back in here. Sorry for all the noise. So I'll talk about that one. The other one I'm going to talk about is called the Little Snap Pea Crunch, and it's from Burpee Seeds. So this one is meant to be a dwarf pea variety. And so it says it only grows to about 32 inches, which is still pretty tall. Um, but in a rice garden, I mean, you're limited on space. Like you can actually see this is the patio pea behind me that's growing up. I do have a trellis back there and the patio pea gets really tall, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, but this is meant to be a dwarf snap pea. So I was like, oh, that's really neat. You know, we need to grow like some a dwarf variety in the garden. Um, you will soon see that I was quite, I'm so far not too happy with this one. There is another variety called the Tom Thumb Snap Pea, and I believe it's on Baker Creek, and it's unfortunately out of stock. And every time I look, it's out of stock. So maybe one day I can get those and try them out. Okay, the other one I'm going to try is, or talk about, is the Sugar Ann from Johnny's. And this is just your plain old Snap Pea. Um, I think, let's see in the back, talks about, doesn't really talk about how tall they get on this one. No. Yeah, it just talks about spacing, unfortunately. Um, I'll have to look up how tall it gets, but I'll show you in the garden how tall it's gotten. And it's actually not that tall. And I really like this one so far. So we'll talk about that one. And then uh, the Royal Snap. So this is actually a purple. I'll take one out for you. This actually is a purple snap pea, so the flowers are purple and the pods are purple, and the peas are like this weird dark green color. Um, some of them are a little more like have a pink shade to them, while most other, and I'll show you guys the other sugar in. There we go. Like this one is much lighter. So the royal snap is meant to have a purple flower. Close that up. Purple flower purple pod as well. So I really was kind of interested in that because the color is kind of neat sounding. So I'm going to show you guys the four peas so far in my garden and how they're doing on the video because I can't remember off the top of my head how old each plant is. I will include how many days it's been since it germinated essentially um, or even since I planted it but around how old the plant is in days and I'll put that up on the video so you can see because the age of the peas is all different. Um, also, I have two different gardens, as you can see. Um, this garden over here, which has, I'll just kind of turn this a little bit, has tomatoes and has my peppers down there. Um, this is what I call my blossom garden. So this garden has mostly, well, plants that have blossoms on them. Uh, because for rice, you actually use different nutrients depending on what you're growing. So if you're growing a lot of plants with that have flowers, then you're going to be using a different type, different amount of well, not different amount, but different types of nutrients. So I have like a blossom nutrient I put in there. It's like heavy in phosphorus and things like that. So that's what this garden is. So it has at the top, you can't really see it, but it has lavender. And I've done this on my pat, on my um, hydroponic tours. I do patio tours too, but you can see all the plants I'm growing on those videos. But I also have beans up there. And then like I said, lots of tomatoes. 
um, bell pepper jalapeno, and some peas as well. My other garden, which is over here, is mostly uh, lettuce, herbs, things like that. On the bottom, I have some celery, just baby celery, uh, and then broccoli, which is also pretty small still. So this is this whole garden here, and there's spinach. That's what this is. Um, <clears throat> this garden is mostly for non-blossoming plants because I use the sprout nutrients in this one uh, just because I don't need to support blossoming plants. So it's kind of helpful, especially if you have two hydroponic systems. A little tip uh, is to separate your plants based on their needs. If you're able to. Not everybody has two gardens, so that's not always possible. All right. So like I said, I'm going to show you each type of pea. I will put up text and pictures as I show you guys the peas just so you can see what's going on. I'll tell you the results are pretty surprising. All right. Here we go. Okay. So I thought we'd start first with the patio pea. So this is the rise pea that you can buy from rise and you can also buy from just online from different seed sellers. So in this garden here, these are all three are patio peas. I even have a cute little corgi <laughs> that has patio pea written on it. So these patio peas are kind of different ages. You'll see that one of them is much older than the others and it's wrapping all the way around the garden. So this pea grows really lanky, like it's really tall and it doesn't actually produce a lot of food at the bottom part of the plant. So here we go. I'll, I'll kind of pan up and you guys can see how tall it gets. So this is the bottom of the garden. I have a trellis on the side. The peas have grown up, up, <laughs> continuing to go up. And then once we got up here, they kept growing and then they wrapped all the way around and are now stopping right here. So, I mean, they're going to keep going, not really stopping, but that's where we are currently. So this patio pea grows really fast, but the trick is it gets humongous. Um, I will put a link to these. These are actually vine clips that I got on Amazon and this top pops down. I really like them, except for it's kind of hard to pull this little piece down, uh, but they're pretty neat. And I like how they kind of blend in with the look of the garden. So kind of my review on the patio pea is some of the pros are it grows really fast. It grows really easily. The germination rate is great. And when it does start making fruit, like I've already picked a couple of these off, actually. Like here's one here. There's another one here. Um, I got flowers here. So once it starts making food, it makes a lot. However, controlling it is kind of a pain, especially in a garden like this, because it needs to be in the light. You can't just let it sit on top of the garden outside of the light. It's just not going to work. I've actually tried that before. It all flopped on top of itself and all died. So you got to make sure that it has support and that can be kind of a pain. And like I said, so far, I mean, this garden is about six feet tall. And if I just let that vine go straight up to the ceiling, <laughs> I mean, it would probably touch the ceiling. I'm not even joking. Uh, so these things are getting to be like eight plus feet tall. Uh, and I just don't know if that's the best size for a hydroponic garden. Okay, so that's the patio pea, and you can also kind of get a look at my blossom garden here. So my lavender, my beans over here, got a little nursery with some actually wildflowers I'm going to put outside. Um, tomatoes, peppers, and another tomato. I had too many tomatoes, clearly. Okay, so let's look at the other garden. Okay. So this is my, what I call my sprout garden. This garden has non-blossoming plants, although I do have a tomato I'm a transplant outside in here. Um, this is the broccoli and then the celery, which is super tiny. Okay, so here are the three peas. Um, and actually, before I even talk about these, you might be curious, so I'll just show you guys the rest of the garden while I'm here. So this is my spinach. I'm gonna do another video on spinach uh, because spinach is super hard to germinate. But once you get it going, I mean, it's beautiful and tastes great. Here's actually a baby spinach right here that I'm going to move down into this open hole at some point right here. Uh, this stuff in the back is actually miner's lettuce, which is a wild growing lettuce native to the Pacific Northwest. I've actually eaten it in the wild. Uh, so we'll see what happens. I think I have too much growing per pod, but hey, whatever. Uh, that tomato will eventually move. It's just in this garden right now because I don't have room in the other one. Iceberg lettuce romaine that I'm currently eating and it's almost done, rosemary and thyme, which has been a huge struggle, but it seems to be coming along, another nursery full of some baby plants, including some pak choy, which I'm really excited about, that's the one here on the left, 
Uh, so we'll see how that goes. I have a basil in the back. Little basil. I already ate all my other basil. A bolting cilantro, which I need to get rid of, although I pulled the bolt off once right there. And in the back, I have some parsley. Okay, back to the peas. That was kind of a mini <laughs> hydroponic garden tour. All right, so kind of the elephant in the room here is this one in the front. So why don't we just talk about that one first? Uh, you might have guessed it, but this is the little crunch snap pea. And I am just kind of disappointed by how small this is. So here's my hand for comparison. This thing is supposed to get at least one to two feet. And it's barely, what, five inches, six inches tall. And it's at least 30 days old. I'll, like I said, I'll put the ages on the video. So, so far, not too pleased with this one. Also, it has a poor germination rate. It took me probably four tries to get this thing to germinate. Um, it actually was in the other garden originally, and I just moved it to this garden. So we'll see if that helps, because I have more sprout in this garden to kind of help facilitate young plant growth. Maybe that'll do something. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, this uh, one in the back, I believe, is also just another patio pea. Yep, so this is another patio pea. You can get a kind of an idea of how this one's doing. I feel like they are all doing the same no matter what garden they're in. This one I have trained up along the trellis, and then I'm going to put it up this side trellis here. But this is just another patio, patio pea doing well. But again, they get ginormous. So and when I say ginormous, I mean tall. All right, so here are the two other ones. Let's say hi to Sylvie. Hi, Sylvie. Okay, so she's going to come over. You want to come over here, Sylvie? Hi. Oh, good girl. Okay, so on the right, this one. I know, I know it looks kind of sad at the bottom. I don't know why the peas do this. They kind of dry out. I think it's because they're putting a lot of their energy into new growth at the top. I don't think it has anything to do with the health of the plant because it's doing great on the top, which I'll talk about in a second. However, this one is not as happy. And this is the royal snap. So if you look closely right there, you can see the color of the snap pea. Remember I was talking about how they have like a pinkish color. So this is the royal snap pea. And I'll kind of go on the other side of the trellis in a second, but it's only about this tall. Like it's not very tall, barely a foot and a half. It hasn't produced any flowers, and obviously, since there's no flowers, there's no fruit. So again, and this one was hard to germinate. I think this was my third try. So not doing so hot. Uh, this one in the back, which is doing really well up here, and you'll see on the outside of the trellis in a second, this is the sugar and snap. So this one's doing fabulous. I actually like this one the most because it produced fruit. And it only got this tall so far. I mean, it's still growing, but it produced fruit before it got to be eight feet tall. Unlike the patio pea, which like this one hasn't produced a single flower, uh, this sugar ann is doing really well. So let's take a look on the outside of the trellis. There's not much to see out here, uh, but you can see the patio pea kind of coming along the back here, and I'm gonna train it up the side of the trellis. And here is my Sugar Ann. So it has another pod. Sorry, it's a little blurry. Well, there we go. Little Another pod here. Uh, there's a flower here. It's still growing up the side. I've actually already pulled some pods off of this thing and ate them. So that's why there's not as many. But so far, I'm really liking it. This is the Royal Snap right here. So this one hasn't produced any flowers yet. So we'll see. I know I don't have any of the blossom nutrients in here. I might kind of just throw a little bit of it in just to kind of give these guys a boost, but that's where we're at so far. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and change the camera one more time and talk about kind of my rankings for the peas. Okay, I'm back. So let's go over kind of my personal rankings, one to four, one being my favorite or in my opinion, the best pea and then four being kind of my least favorite. You probably kind of gathered what my favorite was and my least favorite was just from watching that part of the video. But let's go ahead and put them in order and wrap it up. Okay, so my favorite so far, I do like the patio piece from Rise, but I really got to go with the Sugar Ann. So that's the one I showed you near the end there that already had multiple flowers, pea pods, and the plant only, it was only about a foot tall, maybe a foot and a half. 
So I like how it's a pretty compact plant, although it's not supposed to be that I'm aware of. Um, and it's already producing fruit. So I think that's great. So I'm really excited to see how much food I get off of that compared to the patio pea, how tall it gets near the end of its life cycle, et cetera. So we'll see. But currently, where things stand right now, the sugar and snap is my favorite. My second favorite is definitely the rise patio peas. And like I said, you don't have to buy these on Rise's website and they only send you one pea per actual grow pod. So it's not very economical to buy it from them. Um, I've since found another website I can buy them from. I'm blanking, maybe I'll put it on the screen. Um, what seed seller I found patio peas on, but you can just Google it too. Uh, but I really like the patio pea just because it grows really fast. It's reliable, it germinates almost all the time. I've had very good success with germination. Uh, and once it does get really tall, <laughs> it does produce a lot of fruit, uh, in the form of snap peas. So that is something I like about it, but I don't like how big it gets. Like it's a pain to have to constantly try and clip it onto the rice garden or try and find a way to support the vine. Cause it's just monstrous. Okay. So my bottom two, unfortunately the Royal snap, I just, I've had so little success germinating it, which is funny because on Johnny's seeds, they actually have a germination percent. So maybe it's something I'm doing wrong, but I've germinated a lot of plants. Um, I know this is backwards for you guys, so I apologize, but it's a 97% germination rate. I definitely was not experiencing 97%, but again, I could have been messing something up with the opening because you have that foil hole opening. Maybe it wasn't big enough, things like that. So it's also just not growing very fast. Um, which could be competition for nutrients in the garden because it's growing right next to the other snap peas. I don't know. So I'm going to give it, obviously I have a lot more seeds, so I want to keep trying um, and see if I can become successful with that one. Okay, and obviously so far my least favorite is the little snap, and it's nothing against burpee seeds, and you can buy these in other places than just burpee seeds. Um, that's actually burpees where I got my broccoli, which I'm so far really liking. Uh, it just, it's tiny. You saw it. It's like this big. I think it's almost 40 days old. That's insanely like, like old for a pea plant. Now, again, it was competing in this garden with all the tomatoes and peppers. So maybe it had something to do with that, but these plants aren't using, they're using a lot of nitrogen, but they're fully developed. So at this point, I don't think that's a competition issue. I don't know what's going on with it. It has a really bad germination rate. So it even says on here, harvest in about 50 to 60 days. Well, <laughs> definitely won't be 50 to 60 days when I harvest that thing, because I don't even know if it's going to make any fruit at this point. Um, so those are my kind of my ratings for snap peas. If you know of any other varieties that you've tried, like I said, I really want to try the Tom Thumb. I think it's called. It's a really small dwarf compact snap pea um, from Baker Creek. I just, it's not available yet. So hopefully I can find that one and try that one out. All right, everybody. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Thanks for stopping by.